Today on Hacktip, we're reviewing an online tool to share those packet captures online. And this episode of Hacktip is brought to you by Atlassian. Welcome to Hacktip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm Shannon Morrison. Today, we are checking out an online tool for your recon from Wireshark to share those packet capture files online. Now, while Wireshark and TCP dump or WinDump can definitely get you started and help you focus on your network, sometimes you need a tool to help you share your PCAP files with friends or coworkers or your cat or your dog. Enter CloudShark over at cloudshark.org. This is a paid service that allows you to upload your PCAP files and view them as if they were actually in Wireshark. Now, it doesn't allow you to to do packet captures like Wireshark does, you can just view and analyze them. So CloudShark is best for collaboration and sharing, obviously. So today, I'm going to give you a review of CloudShark and why this might be useful or not if you need to share your packet captures. So first off, if you haven't been following along, a PCAP file is the packet capture file you receive from Wireshark, which is a packet analyzer for networks. Now, I have done a whole entire series on Wireshark, which you can find over on your YouTube playlist at youtube.com slash hack5. Highly suggest watching that series in case you haven't checked it out quite yet and you're just joining us on Hacktip. So first and foremost, do not use this CloudShark tool if the packet capture you need to share includes security-minded content, because you are legit uploading your network info onto a cloud service. So again, don't upload them to a cloud service if they contain sensitive content. You are putting trust into a company and their security protocols. Now, if you just need to share non-sensitive PCAP files for use in education, or with somebody using an iOS device that can't necessarily use Wireshark, or with a boss who doesn't have a clue what Wireshark is and is not necessarily going to download them on their Mac, then it might be a good idea to upload those files onto a cloud service. Might be. I will leave that discretion up to you. Now, signing up for cloudshark.org gives you a free trial, and after your trial is up, you can pay 19 bucks a month for a personal account and upwards from there for enterprises and such. So they really aim this towards businesses and the like. But you can use it for personal use as well. Now, you can upload a PCAP file through their drag and drop interface, which is found right over here. And that file will now show up under your profile along with any others that you've uploaded as well. And you'll find the file name right here, so it's very easy easy to search for them. You can also import a file from a URL if somebody else using CloudShark has a specific one that they want to share with you that you want to download too and be able to analyze. Uh, and you can also search for specific ones via the search box, which is down here. Luckily, they have a ton of filters that you can go through and use, which is very, very useful, especially if you have hundreds of packet captures, which you can necessarily have happen if you're analyzing a network day in and day out. So once you have everything in there, you can click table options to remove or add any necessary columns to your list of files. Uh, there is a nifty CloudShark plugin for Wireshark that requires an API plugin. So if you need an API token for Wireshark so that you can do that and automatically upload to CloudShark, that can be found under your preferences. Lastly, you can also refresh. You can merge a couple of different packet captures together to see them um, in the same exact capture file. And you can add tags. So if there is a specific tag that you need to add to, say, one capture, click there, choose your tag, I'll put snubs, and then save your capture. And that will start showing up under your tags column if you decide to have tags as a column entry under your table options. Now, if I click on my file, it's going to open and it will look like dot, 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 Wireshark. Yes, it looks just like Wireshark. Now, after the break, I am going to show you some really, really useful tools in CloudShark and discuss my own thoughts on this tool and if it is necessarily necessary for your own use. Today, nearly anything is possible, and if we can dream it, teams can build it. So how do you bring everyone together to create what is next? 
The solution? Teaming up with Atlassian, makers of collaboration software that lets teams work and communicate better together. Assign, track, and manage tasks for any project, no matter how complex. That is the clarity of Jira. Create and share content, organize results, and bring team members up to speed with the flexibility of Confluence. Instant message or video chat with your team from any device with the freedom of HipChat, and test, review, and manage code snippets in real time. And that is the power of Bitbucket. You know that we do a lot of coding around here. I have used Bitbucket to share code snippets with my coworkers and to get their feedback so that I can make better segments for you guys whenever I am learning new coding languages because you know I love to learn. You can visit Atlassian.com to learn more about how Jira, Confluence, HipChat, and Bitbucket give your team everything you need to organize, discuss, and complete shared work. Atlassian, helping teams everywhere team up to create what's next. Atlassian.com. We are now back with CloudShark and viewing my PCAP file. Now, if we look back over at cloudshark.org, yeah, looks a little similar to Wireshark, like eerily similar for viewing, and it kind of works the same way too. So at the top, you'll see this little thing called display filters. This is where you can enter uh, things such as TCP and then click enter and it'll just give you the protocols TCP in my packet capture. Or I could do something a little bit more like IP address equaling only 151 dot, what is that first one? I'm gonna turn off this comment right here and I will go over that in a moment. 129.69, hit enter. And then we just get those IP addresses equaling uh, the one that I chose. So that display filter option is going to show me anything that I wanna view from IP addresses to protocol entries. It accepts all the same filters as Wireshark. So you shouldn't have a problem using any filters that you've already memorized as well. Now the display filters option in CloudShark does not give you the color signifiers that Wireshark does. So for example, if I type in TCP up here, it's not going to turn green. But if I switch over to Wireshark and type in TCP up here, it does turn green. If I type something wrong, it turns red. But if I switch back over to Chrome and type in something wrong here, it does not turn red. So you're not gonna get that fancy little signifier that you do that we've gotten so used to in Wireshark. Now I think that if CloudShark implemented that, it would be really useful. Now the graph allows you to zoom in on a specific set of data based on time. So if I wanted to see uh, just things that happen six seconds into my, my Wireshark packet capture, then I could move it over to 6.0 to 6.9, and that will just show me what happened at that time frame. So very easy. And just like in Wireshark, the analysis tools help you view the tree of layers along with a bunch of other stuff. So let's choose protocol hierarchy. And this will show me my nice handy little graph of each of the layers that is going on in the stream of data. I can also choose to have conversations. So I can choose a specific protocol conversation and I'll choose this one since there's a lot of frames going on. And you can see all those different conversations happening between them. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and clear that and choose follow stream. So for this example, let me pick a, let's see, I'll do that one. Okay, so I'm following this stream of data from that specific packet, and this is going to show me the ASCII or hex data for TCP and UDP packet captures. Uh, and there's so much more that you can do under that analysis tool as well. Now moving on, the graph option is pretty cool if you wanna view uh, just specific graph graphical data about your packet capture for a specific time. So this will show you the bytes by second or by millisecond even. And I did mention this previously, this little comment button. So if I have a specific capture in here, let's say this one, um, I can say which black magic um, device is this? and then leave that there for somebody else to comment on back. So they can always go in and analyze this data as well as myself. I find that very, very useful, especially if you're working in a place where you have lots and lots of different devices that are online all the time. Uh, lastly, there is also a comment button for just the entire packet capture as a whole. To do that, you go over to more info, go under comments and annotations, 
and then I can view not only the annotations that I've made throughout different packet captures or throughout different packets, but also for the entire one. So this is my comment for the entire packet capture, boom. And then I can save changes. So very easy to use. So here's my question to you. Is it worth 19 bucks a month or more? You can also pay by the year as well. I might as well mention that. Maybe, maybe not. If you are an educator, it would probably be useful. And I know a lot of educators watch the show, so you may want to consider this. Uh, since the packet captures that I share on my show are for public use and everybody can link to them publicly or whatever you want, it would probably be very useful in that sense. Uh, but uh, would I pay 19 bucks an hour? That's, that's the choice that you got to make. Now, I would not even consider using this if I needed it for InfoSec, for sensitive materials. I am paranoid. I don't like sharing more to the cloud than I need to. Maybe that's just me, but you know, I think it's a good thing to be paranoid online now and then. <laughs> Let me know what you think. You can send me a comment below or you can email us tips at hack5.org and be sure to check out our sister show Hack5 for more great stuff just like this. Hack5 is up for an award, so you can vote every single day until June 12th, hat.t2 t2.eu is the link for more info on that. And with that, I am Shanna Morris reminding you to trust your technolust.